Welcome to Mailbox Mondays. Today we have a, a lot of stuff to unbox. Have you been on the internet again? I've been speaking to people that are on the internet. Mm. Um, they wanted to send us some stuff. I said no. They sent us some other stuff. This has been hanging around the studio for about a week now. I still don't know what it is. What is this? What's, you know what a sponge is, don't you? Well, yeah, it's a weird looking sponge. It looks like our audio stuff. <laughs> it stops us at the echo. Maybe that's what we should do. Just Can we ask him for 1,000 more? <laughs> Make it... Make it happen. Make what happen? <laughs> what is it? Some stuff doesn't translate very well, does it? Is this bike related? Uh, yes, but also not. <sighs> we have very bad bike cleaning facilities at our studio, i.e. we have none. These guys got in touch with us about a different product, which I had no interest in, but I did see that they made these, so I asked them for a couple. It is a portable pressure washer. Yeah, it looks like a massage gun. I've never seen someone struggle so much to open a box. So, like, if you were a cyclocross racer or a mountain biker, I mean, I've done this before. You go to Surrey, the trails, and then you ride your mountain bike, and then you finish your ride, and then you need to put your bike back in the car, and it's covered in shit. That's where this would be a benefit. Or, for us, a studio where you don't have an outside tap. Do you know when you play Laser Quest, you're supposed to hold it this way and go like that? It's faster. And paintballing. Fanning. Fanning? <laughs> Oh, I broke it. I crossed the red it. <laughs> Probably bad for it to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Let's, let's, not, not do yeah, let's not do that. This end of it dips into a bucket rather than connects to a hose pipe. The other end goes on this and then you've got a portable jet wash. Even the nozzle on the end has like tilted jet, foam and shower, 40 degree, 20 degree settings. I don't know what any of those mean. This bit's for soap. So I'm just going to connect it up, see how it jets, and then we're going to wash Nick's bike for him. If you do decide to pressure wash a bike, you have to be a little bit careful because you don't want it to be too powerful and drive all the grease out of your bearings because then they'll be dry and then you have to replace them, which is expensive. So, how strong is this? It seems quite sensible. It is, yeah. It fe I feel like it's not doing enough, but I think it's probably doing the right amount. Fresh bird poo. Moldy old wood. A little bit, but not very much. So it's definitely not a proper jet wash, but it's probably perfect for washing bikes. Another thing to consider here is that when you do use a pressure washer, even a high powered one like a Karcher, you use a lot less water than you would a hose pipe because you fill it up with however much. In this bucket, there's not very much. It's going down really slowly. So good Hoto portable pressure washer. Thumbs up so far. What I definitely know is we are actually going to use these ourselves for a while. So we'll see how good they actually are and report back soon. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Essentially, I put some soap in there and then, or bike wash concentrate, and then stick to foam and shower. And then I think in theory, I think you get more foaming kind of wash, but obviously we don't have- That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Brush, brush it, agitate it, yeah, yeah. Back into jet. Is your frame bag waterproof? Not as waterproof on your tailfin one. We've not lost any battery yet, because it was on three bars. We've not charged them, so we took it out of the box. And earlier, before you came in, I checked, it was on three, so... If you buy this off their website, it is a very odd number, which suggests that they do not work in Great British Pounds. The official price is £243.47, discounted currently to £182.21. And is and this one of those things that's always discounted? It probably is always discounted, and it probably is always a weird number. We also got hit with customs, which was about 25 quid. Uh, so it's, it is quite a premium, well, it's a very premium product. It's, it's, it's definitely expensive. Last winter, a lot of you will remember that I cycled across America with one of my best friends, Justin. We raised 200,000 pounds for charity, including gift aid. And to commemorate that ride, Commem commemorate? That sounds like someone's died. To commemorate the ride, we've made a jersey inspired by the USA flag, which is pretty obvious, I hope. It also looks like Tyler Durden's t-shirt from Fight Club, not on purpose. If you wanna buy one, there'll be a link in the description down below, along with other pre-order things from Atticus, which is the company owned by Jimmy, the guy who's on camera with me all the time. Blue jersey, do it. Oh, and the donation page is still open if you want to donate. Get Kids Going, great charity that give kids access to sports equipment like adaptive wheelchairs, hand cycles, stuff like that. 
Thank you. There's actually three jerseys that we've got available in pre-order. Francis is one, one that Emily designed called the Frequencies jersey, and one that Chris Hall designed called the... I don't know what it's called. Black jersey with white stuff Cracked, on it. cracked jersey. The pre-order closes for all three of them on Monday the 5th of July. On Monday the 5th of July at 9pm UK time and then once it's closed, that is it. We'll ship them in a couple of weeks time, a couple of months time, whenever it is. Um, and you can never get it again. Keep your kit on Francis. You're gonna need it for the next section. Put some inside the box. Inside the box. Did you see that Zwift launched the Zwift Play. Of course I did, and we're really late to the party. So, we have shifted the kind of videos we make over the last few months, and unfortunately, we're not on the media list in lots of companies like PR list things. Basically, we missed the boat with the new Zwift Play launch, which you will have seen is a remote control for steering your Zwift character. It's very gamified, isn't it? It, makes Very, me, it, it is a game. I mean, it, they consider it a game. It makes me think of, what's that little handheldy thing that you've got? Nintendo Nintendo Switch. Switch. Because we didn't have one, I messaged Tom from Zwift and asked him if we could have one to play with, and he said, yeah. And now we're on the media list, so if anything else gets released, we can um, get hold of it on release day, which is great. This is a remote control which attaches to your handlebars on your bike, so you can steer and control your character in the Zwift game. Enter Gigantic TV. So it looks like the new software already has steering on it. Or it no, no, because it can't know we've got them yet. So they must all just all do that now. I'd like to throw away the instructions and just see if we can work it out. Mm. What do you think? Could it be that? Why are your shoes so squeaky? <laughs> Don't ask me, ask Adidas. Did Press the right side button RS. To what? Oh, I found it. There's so many hidden buttons. Press Y to skip a workout block. He's dropped you. That I can steer, look. He's wait. dropped you. Ah, that's my, no, that's my DI2. <laughs> Chris didn't even wait for me. What So the steering is these hidden buttons under here, which you can reach on the drops and on the hoods. And you go left one for left, right one for right. And there's also an extra button on the side of these here, which I can feel. And then you've got the buttons on the top here which you can use to actually control the game. So you can go like, menu. So you can control everything without having to grab your mouse or your phone or your companion app and all of that stuff. It's quite good. It's gonna take my brain a minute because I keep pressing my DI2 bikes. And... First of all problems. I mean, if you were well into your Zwift, having these just permanently installed, not that they take long to install. Well designed, I'm impressed. You can't chat with it though, can you? I can, I can keep typing Zs and that's it. <laughs> That's all I can do is type. <laughs> we might be missing something there, Jimmy. No, it's just Z. No, it just keeps saying Z. Even though I'm pedaling, you hold the brakes, you don't move at all. If you want something to control your character, it's good. It's well designed, feels nice, doesn't get in the way of your riding. How much does it cost? It almost doesn't go far enough, does it? Like, I want to control my character, but you want to do stuff like pop wheelies and like GTA, like push people off a bike, steal their bikes, do. you like, I when I'm riding my turbo, I want a distraction from riding the turbo and have an actual gameplay stuff that was a bit more fun than just turning around. Would be better, I think. I think in their launch bump, it was talking about it not having, it being in like better mode and not having like full functionality. So there is other stuff they've got planned. Next question to both of you. How much do you think this costs? It's cycling stuff, isn't it? It's probably like 80 to 100 pounds. 80 quid? I don't know, that's ridiculous. No, it shouldn't be more than... It's not worth more than a five or a tenner just to... Just, it isn't, is it, currently? If you could do like little side quests and actually make it a proper game, fine. I'm just gonna, you know, go and find stuff and pick it up, you know what I mean? Yeah. At the moment, just you turning, like... It launched at £100 and it is going to go up to £150. Bearing in mind you also need a subscription which I believe is now like 15 quid a month as well. It's not very good value at this point. It has a lot of potential. Only really diehard Zwift people are going to buy this. Tom Lish and Walker will probably already have one. Francis! What? Can you hear the echo in the room? Ah! A lot of you will know that over the last few months we've been struggling with the echo in this room. It's very... Echoey. <laughs> we have... 
a billion mics to test and you're about to join us on the journey. <laughs> so basically we spoke to our camera shop in uh, Jesmond, whatever it is, in Newcastle, Wex in Newcastle. Mm. They got in touch with Sennheiser, which is one of the companies they sell. The Sennheiser rep has sent us something like five mics to test. They're just unknown, we have to send them back, but we thought it was a good, good opportunity to test some audio and see if the mic can help us deal with the echo in the room. I'm not optimistic. Microphone number one is a record a professional shotgun microphone for video journalists. Oh. Oh. Currently we're using a Rode VideoMic Go 2, which is the latest version of the Go, which is, I think, a fantastic microphone. Outdoors is brilliant, but in here it's a very short shotgun, unlike this one. The longer barrel you go, the more honed in it is and should be better at dealing with the echo. I think this is about 300 quid mic, so let's get it on the camera and see if it works. No. Sennheiser MKE 600. We've just removed our normal microphone. Now this is the onboard Sony ZV E1 microphone working now. Sound any different? It should sound worse. It doesn't work. So our first microphone test has not ended well. We'll go on to the next one. Next up is the MKE 400, which is a lower end microphone to the one that we just tried to use and it didn't work. So light. It looks nice. We have now plugged in the MKE 400. Does it sound any different? On the waveform it is working, unlike the other one. So why doesn't the other one work? I don't know. Move That's disappointing. Always. I'm gonna move back. Does it sound echoey from here? You get other stuff in the box with this one, like this fluffy rat. The expensive microphone, the fancy one, MKE 600. This jack, which we've been plugging into the camera, is actually a smartphone jack. So it's a different, there's three bands on this 3.5 mil headphone thing. Why is there two different versions? That's stupid. Also, why does this come with that one? Because journalists would use a phone to record stuff. Probably, yeah. You would be doing an interview straight into your phone going, tell me about how your week in the football match went. Pretty good. Excellent. It's so expensive, it has to be good. It should be good. And it should solve all of our problems. We'll give you another chance, Sennheiser. But please, just include more cables. 300 quid. Disappointed! Next up, we have some high-end lav mics from Sennheiser. And this means the small microphone that you clip to your shirt, much closer to your face. You don't hear the echo, but you have to have a thing attached to you, which is kind of annoying. You can hide it underneath a t-shirt. We've been using the Rode Mic Go Lavs, and they're okay, but I don't think they sound as good as this shotgun mic. I disagree, I think they sound better than this, personally. They sound muffled and horrible. Which is better than an echo. Oh, Jesus. We are going from the Go 2 original microphone to the Lavs now. We are now using the Sennheiser Lav. Is it working? It appears to be. I can wonder in this direction. Look at these. Lovely sun gods over here that you can't see on camera, but I'm off camera talking about them. I'm just editing that clip and the labs sound absolutely terrible. To be fair to them, you can adjust the gain and they don't have auto gain because they're professional mics. But the fact that they come out of the box, not ready to clip on a shirt in this position is a bit weird. More testing required. The last microphone and one that I'm most excited about because I do a lot of filming outside, traveling, taking this camera out of a bag, stuffing it back in a bag. And the microphone that we have at the moment has a plug that sticks into the side of the camera like a normal audio jack, just like a set of headphones. It can get messed up. And if that breaks, your camera's broken and you have to get the whole piece that accepts it fixed. This is a Sony ECM-B1M. It doesn't have a cable. It attaches to the camera through the hot shoe and communicates with the camera as well. The camera's made by Sony, this is made by Sony, so it all should work really well together. It's also significantly more expensive than the one we have on top of here, so I hope it would sound better. This is the microphone on zero decibels. The attenuator is now on zero decibels. Hello, hello, hello. How does the echo sound from there? It probably won't solve the echo because it's still a short microphone, but... It's worth a try. Let us know in the comments. That marks the end of Mailbox Mondays this week. A bit of behind the scenes about microphones, which won't be for everyone, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And it's a little look behind the curtain. It's not a curtain, we haven't got a curtain. We should have a curtain. We should have a curtain. That would help with the audio. It would. It yeah. would help with the echo. It would. Thanks for watching. Like, S subscribe, subscribe, and press the bell. Stuff.